So we talked about the Stirling numbers of the second kind. Now let's back up and talk about Stirling numbers of the first kind. I'm gonna give you the signless variation first, and we'll talk about the signed one next. These are often denoted with this lowercase c. C of n, k counts the number of permutations of n with k cycles. Remember the second kind counted set partitions of n into k blocks. Now instead of blocks, I have cycles. So notice once again, it doesn't matter the order in which I take the cycles. That of course doesn't matter. But the order the numbers appear within the cycle absolutely does. This is different from this, right? The orientation of the, the cycles really means that the order of the numbers matters. So these are different objects. Okay, so it's still something that we can count. And there's some simple formulas that we can get, of course, um, along the same way. So let's think about some of the extreme cases. Let's think about what is C of N1. This says, how many permutations of N have one cycle? Well, we've done that before. Remember the one cycle means it's all a single cycle. So this is just the number of N cycles, which we counted before is N minus one factorial. Okay, so that's already different than we had in the previous case. Let's jump to the other extreme. What is C of n in? This means permutations of n with n cycles. That means every number is in its own cycle. Well, there's one way to do that. It's the identity. So that one's nice and boring. Okay, what about C of n, n minus 1? If we think about that one for a second... We can say, okay, well, if we have n minus 1, then, again, pigeonhole principle applies. So we have more numbers than tables. So some table gets two numbers, at least two numbers. And in fact, just counting them up, exactly one table gets exactly two numbers. And now when you have just two numbers, it doesn't matter which order you put them in. So all that matters is which two numbers go together. So kind of like the Sterling numbers of the second kind, this is actually just n choose 2. So that one's pretty easy. What about C of n, n minus 2? There is a formula for this one as well. It's similar to the way that we did the previous one. And I'll give you the formula in this case. It's going to be 2 times n choose 3, right? Because n choose 3, choose a 3 cycle. And then there are two ways that you can orient that 3 cycle, plus if you have two two cycles, that's gonna be the same as what we had in the Sterling case. But you can see that this two here is a little different and you can do a little bit of algebra. The more common way that you see this written is um, three n minus one divided by four times n choose three. You just get there with a little bit of algebra. So you can practice that if you wanna practice your playing with coefficients. But let's get a way to compute these guys. Here's the theorem we're after. So similar to before, we can do an example to kind of see that this theorem is true. Here's an example. Let's take the same example that we did last time, n equal 5 and k equal 3. We want to compute c and k and then compute this side. So what is c of 5, 3? So again, 3 is 2 less than 5. That's kind of handy. It's why I gave you this computation right here. So what is that? That's going to be... 15 minus 1 divided by 4, 5 choose 3. Okay, so that's 14 over 4 times 10. Luckily, that's going to give us an integer. Okay, now we want to compute the other side. So 35 is our target. What is Cn minus 1? So C of 4, 2. So unfortunately, we're going to have to use this formula again, but that's okay. It's not so bad, right? Now we're going to have 12 minus 1 divided by 4 times 4 choose 3. 4 choose 3 is 4, so that cancels out, so we get 11. All right, and now over here we have n minus 1. That's different. Last time it was k. This time it's n minus 1, which is 4, times c of n minus 1 k. So c of 4, 3, that's going to be this formula. So this is 4 times 4 choose 2. 4 choose 2, of course, is 6. So we get 24, and in fact, 24 plus 11 is indeed 35. So we can see that the theorem is true in this case. But as before, what we want to do is come up with a combinatorial proof. And it's going to be very similar in flavor to the last time. 
and which is sort of the point to kind of get you used to how these arguments go, how they're always sort of following the same process. So we're gonna combinatorially interpret this and decompose it into a union of sets given here. And because we see n is going down to n minus one, in both cases, we're gonna think about where is the number n. So here's our proof of the formula. Okay, we're gonna let um, w be a permutation of n with k cycles. We're gonna think about what are our two disjoint cases. They need to be disjoint. We'll talk a lot about disjoint things in the next series. So either we have a cycle that's just n, or n is in a cycle with, say, i. So those are the two cases. Either n's a fixed point, goes to itself, or it's not. We'll see that the n is a fixed point is gonna go with this case. So if n is in a cycle by itself, what are we gonna do? The same thing we did last time. We're gonna delete it. Okay, then delete the whole cycle. What do we get? We get a permutation of n minus one into k minus one cycles. These are exactly counted by this Stirling number. Fantastic. What about in this case? Again, let's think about how many choices there are. So we're gonna think about here, n goes to itself. Here, n goes to i. So when we take n out, we're gonna kind of shorten up that cycle, right? We're gonna make it one shorter. So there are n minus one choices for the number next to n in its cycle, right? There's something after n, and there are n minus one choices for it. That's what this is. Removing n, removing n gives k cycles for a permutation of n minus one. So now we can delete n out of its cycle We'll just sort of close that cycle up on itself. And now we have a permutation of n minus one. We have not changed the number of cycles. We have changed the size, and there were n minus one choices for where n goes. So that gives us a proof for this recurrence relationship. Next, we'll talk about the connection between Stirling numbers of the first and second kind.